So good evening and welcome to this evening's uh, meeting of Planning and Highways Committee, today being Tuesday the 14th of March 2023. Uh, this meeting is being recorded for publication on the Thatcham Town Council YouTube channel. So welcome. Um, so moving on to the agenda, agenda item one. Um, apologies for absence received from Councillor um, Lily Crop. Mm -hmm. Declarations of interest. I can guess what Councillor List is going to say. Yeah, and whatever agenda item it is, there's a agenda item to review our uh, colours of regards to the coverage. I work with the I'll happily be in the debate and make any comment, but I won't stay in the debate. Uh, and I have shares in Vodafone, um, and I don't think that's material because uh, the chances of them rising on anything at the moment is pretty remote. Councillor Crumley. Uh, yes, item six in the last uh, farm where the name is uh, John Tarragum and I was a solicitor. He was, uh, he was a client, um, but I'm not been a solicitor for seven or eight years and certainly not had any contact with him. I do not regard that as a prejudicial uh, mm -hmm. impression. Something I should mention, but I think I've mentioned this name connection in the past. Yeah. And item 10. Um, Fact in Memorial Hall, I'm a trustee there of not appointed by this uh, council. They're, they're not an applicant, it's just the place where the, mm. the van is going to be. But because the application appears to be redacted, uh, I don't know if um, um, that, that is in any way important with regard to any declaration of interest that I may have. But, uh, I don't okay. think it is. No. It's just the name and address of the person that's applying for it. Yeah. Thank you. So moving on to agenda item three, the minutes. Any comments on the minutes? See no one uh, wishing to uh, raise anything. I'm, well, fine. No, no Could comment. You? I'm happy to say there are true and accurate records. So for both. And seconded by Councillor Lister. And those in favour of approving the minutes, that's unanimous. Thank you. So moving on to agenda item four, matters arising from the previous meeting. Is there um, anything? Nothing from me, Chairman. I think everything from me is on, is a standing item on here, so um, it's on the agenda. So consultation on the West Berkshire local plan review. Uh, so as you know, uh, that was approved by um, full council. So you've all seen the final text. Uh, and hopefully was submitted. Uh, for your information, I also submitted personal uh, response, which um, was some of the uh, submissions, what representations were based on or developed from ones that the council had made with additional information, some of them were things that were outside the remit of, of, of Thatcham Town Council. I can circulate that informally to, to, to councillors if you're interested. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can I just ask for clarification? Um, are the Midgham and Upper Reef? Parish Council submitting. Well, uh, I don't know about Midgham, uh, but Bucklebury and Coldash did. Mm -hmm. And Bucklebury's, we were about 80 pages. I think Bucklebury was roughly double that length. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you want to send a copy you were talking about to me? I will have to see it. Okay, well, they will circulate to all the people, to everybody, but it's it's um, not not, a, not a, a, a meeting item. It's just a sure. for, for your information. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Councillor Lister. Uh, I'm just going to say that the other thing to say is that uh, I, I, through being in contact with, with, with officers uh, over the um, Lawrence Lane inquiry, I understand that West Berkshire Council is, is devoting considerable resources to reviewing the comments with the aim of getting the uh, response submitted uh, very quickly before uh, an event in May. Councillor Lister. So I was just going to ask the uh, there was a debate at West Berkshire Council, mm -hmm. um, Councillor Sumner um, indicated during that debate, I just watched it online, mm -hmm. that there was information that would be put, I believe, into the public domain regards the um, questions that were raised by the opposition on the Democrat side. I'm just wondering, have you or are you aware of any extra information that's become available from Okay. Well, if it, if it, it depends whether it was during the debate or whether it was written questions from councillors. 
If it's written questions from councillors outside of the, the motion, then that would have been that that appears as part of the minutes of the meeting. But I don't know without knowing the specifics of what 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 happened and when it was occurred within the agenda. I can't comment yeah. further. Okay, there's a statement on the West Berkshire Council website in the, their news. The statement from Council Sonder following that debate, and he states the following I am pleased to council to the course last night, the treatment course, and agree to continue with the local plan in the queue. I stated at last night's extraordinary council meeting that I am making public the advice I have received regarding the soundness of the LPR. But you're not I'm not aware of that now. So that's just a thing that's mm. happening there at the moment. So okay. we might uh, we might get some more information from West Berkshire mm -hmm. and the council might be part of the sound. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. So if nothing more on that item, we'll move on to agenda item six, which is the West Berkshire Council draft local transport plan. And the agenda item was to receive and consider. The draft transport plan strategy, which was circulated, uh, has been circulated certainly, um, and it's replaced. It, it's intended to replace the one adopted in 2011, and they're consulting and inviting responses uh, to be returned before our next meeting. And uh, you have received a response um, due to circumstances beyond my control, like the local local plan and the Lawrence's Lane inquiry. Uh, this was only completed yeah, um, yesterday, I think. But hopefully you've had, had time to read it and digest it. Um, for, for, for public, so just to explain that uh, the the website, the web page for, for this consultation invites members of the public to respond on a um, an online form. Um, obviously, the, this committee cannot fill in an online form during a meeting, so I requested uh, a document containing the questions, and they sent me an Excel spreadsheet, which I've converted into this word table. Um, it remains to be seen whether this can be uploaded <laughs> using the form, because I've had to uh, give some explanation in places where they weren't asking for questions. Um, so mainly to go in as a document, we'll deal with that offline. But it's a very long set of questions for, mem for, for members of the public. And in fact, it, it actually repeats some of the questions more than once. Uh, so I say I haven't got this. Uh, it's it's should be in, it's a it's not in the back. It's not the back, is it? Okay. Um, it's, so is that one there? Is that one there? Yeah. They were there, but they were all. I got one in my pack. Um, oh. Can I go for a respond to one of the Yeah. Can I, can well, can I just to give an introduction? So so um the. The way that the, if you if you try to answer the form online, it's very tempting to say there's, there's very little that one can disagree with, um, and there, therefore it's quite tempting to answer strongly agree with everything, um, which doesn't really help if the question is to set priorities. So I have deliberately tried to um, emphasise the things that we think are really important and down down weight lower some things that, while still important, are. Um, not as important, and some things that appear to be irrelevant or not actually in the scope of this, I've said neutral. I haven't actually disagreed with anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, so, well, do you want to? Yeah, sure. I think we're quite right. Um, we could agree on this thing. I agree, strongly agree, etc. We have some mm -hmm. questions here. But I, I take your point when uh, on page two, uh, please tell us what could be explained more clearly. <laughs> you remember that you said the phrase vision led is meaningless management speak. Quite right. I mean, for good sake, what does it mean? Who knows? Yeah. And uh, I rather like on page three at the top, you've identified that uh, in Port Perot, yeah. safety that road markets are repainted when they start to fade. Yeah. Start to fade. And before they become unreadable or invisible, well, there's a thing because we raised mm. the look left, look right, mm. uh, in, yeah. in the in painted in the road crossing points at uh, uh, Fashion Broadway. Well, I picked it up last week, mm. and it was reported to me at that surgery mm. that it was reported yeah. to others before that. Um, I see one or two junctions are starting to be painted, but that really is the key. Yeah. Where it was reported to me last August that two people 
in their motability scooters. We're locked out of the motability yeah. scooter or driving across the road. Um, so surely that should have been yeah. the very first thing that West yeah. Barsh can do. And, yeah. and, and I hear rumour that they're, they're, they're trying to get a, a quote, but I would have thought that white line here yeah. is, should be under yeah. a contract for the whole yeah. new bin section. Mm. Um, and, and to sort of get yeah. here and a bit there and a bit somewhere yeah. else seems a bit odd to me. Well, talking about quotes, perhaps the, uh, the member of the press here might find some quotes in this document. <laughs> Um, just to say there for, for explanation that, that, uh, that what Councillor Williams was referring to was that the uh, document proposed four priorities uh, and I've well, the, proposed that this council proposes a fifth, which is maintaining the road network in good condition, which is a, mm -hmm. the topic that comes up most frequently. Can I also back to page three? Yeah. Page three, places for people. It's a thing to say. Mm. Put people's health and well being at the center of the strategy. Well, absolutely. Central to this is vision zero. I mean, for no one to be seriously or fatally injured on the West Berkshire Highway network. Well, unless we have speed cameras and some form mm. of speed enforcement, the risk is quite high. It has been where we've seen mm. uh, public um, uh, pedestrian crossing points mm. uh, uh, knocked over. And uh, we can remember also a young, young girl was uh, was hit whilst trying to cross the road. It doesn't say how they're going to go to yeah. vision zero. What's a vision and what's zero? What does that really, really mean? We have no idea. I wish they'd come out with some sort of ideas yeah. as to what that means at least. So the, the, if you had looked at the strategy, had looked at the strategy, but it is in fact written by a consultant, it's not actually been, it's not in the name of West Berkshire Council at all. Um, so if I, don't, I won't go through the uh, yeah, um, the, the letters in our in the Broadway. Can't we do them ourselves and show up where it starts? It's just a matter of um, uh, painting it down. Uh, uh, I thought maybe there's some practical aspects of painting. Why do we have to wait for somebody else to do it? Uh, I think we're, we're moving off the. Uh, this is a, a ten-year, fifteen-year strategy. I think we're moving off the, in, digressing a bit, but. Um, uh, I think there are legal issues to do with um, responsibility for highways. But anyway, uh, so let's just go to... Yeah. Uh, so I just highlight that they, um, there is actually one factual mistake in the document where they say that, um, that the, the bus service to Thatcham continues into the late evening, uh, which I've pointed out is incorrect, but that the bus service to Thiel, Mortimer and Purley continues to the late evening, but not the one to Thatcham. Uh, I'll come back on this vision zero that yeah. my friend has mentioned. I mean, you mentioned quite rightly another way that it was managed. Yeah. Speak, maybe you, you said it, but vision zero is well, I mean, it might be a coke zero. Yeah. Well, it, it does actually, it does actually, in this case, it does explain it in the second half. I, I think it's explained. It's yeah, well, it's sort of explained. And if you read the document, it's probably explained more. But it, the second half does actually seem mean what they say, uh, explain what they mean, which is. No, the no serious accidents or fatalities. So, um, and just to say that quite a lot of the large chunks of text have been copied from other submissions that we've made in the past, including the one to Iceni, uh, which is why there's a large section at the end on autonomous vehicles or, or driverless cars, uh, which we, which was just something I was able to cut and paste. Uh, I personally think that this is an example of where the vision document like, lacks vision because this is something that they should at least be thinking about in the 2039 time frame. That's not in detail, but it wasn't mentioned at all. So I won't go into go through the document in, in, in detail unless Councillor Willem's got another. I, I think there's another word that um, was a bit like sustainable, really, is that's the word that people use, it doesn't, mm -hmm. mean, doesn't say what it means, is um, strategy. So I know it's our response, mm -hmm. but it says here the strategy is for pedestrians. Cyclists and public transport are successful. Uh, the need to travel by car or um, You know, how long, how long has West Berkshire been in control of West Berkshire, you're going to say? Um, they've done very, very little uh, yeah. to make it safe for pedestrians, cyclists, uh, yeah. and, and, uh, et cetera. I mean, it's almost as if they were starting out in life. Yeah. Um, I, I just wish they could have done so much of this already in preparation yeah. uh, for the extended expansion, yeah. perhaps of more of the expansion. Yeah. I don't know where that's going to come in. But um, as you said, I think it's all a bit cut and paste, and uh, yeah. uh, well, we'll just keep people quiet yeah. and sending out the best in there. 
in a certain uh, as, I, as I said, um, it, um, there is nothing in this draft strategy that distinguishes it from what a consultancy write, might write for any highways agency in the UK. Yes. Okay, so, um, Back of China. In, yeah. So uh, with that, uh, any further questions or can we? Can I ask a question? Um, it goes back to the work of planning. So yes. Yeah. So, so when um, various Q and A sessions happened last year, when mm. after Regulation Eighteen came out, um, either one of the officers or maybe it was Councillor Cole at the time, uh, in response to questions about the bridge at the railway crossing. Um, mm. Remember that the, the questions were not answered, but there was a response from the officers, and the officers stated that mitigation measures are not to be put to the bridge of the railway. The question of a bridge will be considered through the view of the local transport plan. Yeah. Uh, is this the local transport plan? Yes. Should be referring to? Yes. So should I expect to find a review within this plan of the consideration of a bridge of the railway. Um, did you see that? No, I didn't see it in it, but it's already in my response somewhere. I didn't mention a bridge specifically, but I said solving the um solving the delays at the at the level crossing. Yeah, I think that's the feeling from the council that's about your kind of design. So well blaming something will be considered well, in this plan and it's not. So uh, there's a question there, given that I didn't wasn't aware of that historic thing, perhaps we want to be more specific about that, it's that individual point and reference back to that. What, what, what are you reading from yeah, that official? Yeah, I'm trying to find the source, but I've got the snippets of the text in front of me. Right. Um, data from, you know, so it was currently 2021. Mm. So I can probably find the... Well, can I suggest that what, what we do now is that we, if people are content to agree this subject to expanding the section on the uh, level crossing uh, it, with, with that reference? Proposed mm -hmm. Those in favour, those in favour, so that is unanimous, and we will get to you. But we've got a week or so, uh, yeah. So we've got we, if we can, if in a couple of days, get that, yeah, the minister can get me that uh, text will work up. When does this have to be in? It's about a week, a week's time, roughly nine days, I think. Okay, okay so eight, eight days, yeah. Chair, we, we had previously a representation from the planning department. I, I hope one day that someone from the transport department might like to come along uh, and you know, answer a few questions mm. about the future of fashion. Thank you. Okay. So moving on, agenda item seven, the inquiry, uh, Lawrence's Lane, which uh, to all intents and purposes finished this afternoon. Um, the so we this morning we had so the last. Last week we had th uh, two days in, in the end uh, in person, uh, dealing with planning matters and then the um, the personal circumstances of the the residents and they were cross examined on that. Um, uh, we were quite careful. That there's quite a lot of very personal information was supplied to the parties, and we were quite careful not to to ask questions without disclosing all of the details. But I have to say that I found that day rather demeaning for those people. Um, so, and today we, we then had um, the conditions. So if the inspector is minded to grant, to, to grant the appeal in any way, then he needs to know what conditions need to be applied to make sure that the, the development is, is meets the, the requirements. And that, that discussion took the morning on a, on a without prejudice basis. So the inspector is very, very clear that that is, that is discussed without prejudice, that won't influence his, his decision, but if he decides that way, then that, those, those conditions will be um, applied. And there was pretty much a good agreement on, on all of those. And I added a couple of points in that. And then this afternoon, we had closing submissions, uh, which was uh, the, the, the two, the, 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 the council for the, for the appellant and, the, and, and West Berkshire Council, and they, they're, they're they read out that we, we read out our representations. Theirs took an hour. Uh, mine took about 15 minutes. And I circulated this afternoon after the close uh, what, what I said. And I'd say the main point there is that I was expecting and was it, it, this turned out to be the case that the two uh, council went into quite a lot of detail about law and case law and precedent um, and the European Convention on Human Rights even. Um, and so I focused on the things where I thought um, our opinion might make a difference to the outcome 
for the benefit of the residents of Thatcher, uh, which is why it might, the, the, if you take it by itself, it might look a bit unbalanced, but that is why I focused on those specific issues because those are the, where, the, 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 where I thought a non-legal opinion would, would, be, would, would carry weight. Mm. Well, well so how do you feel it went? Um, there are strong arguments on both sides, and they're very different arguments. So um, the, the the council for the, the West Berkshire Council, uh, their their um, representation, their, their closing submission uh, referenced a very large amount of case law and policies. Uh, the uh, Council for uh, the appellants was much more focused on the principles and the, um, the the legal issues. He is, in fact, a specialist. They're, they're both specialists in this sort of field. Um, but tell me about the conditions then. Yeah, so, there's obviously a lot of whole more spent on the conditions that might be attached to a planning consent if the appeal were mm. granted. What sort of conditions are um, in trouble? So it's about how the site is built, the fact that the drainage strategy is still only outlined. So there's all of the conditions about how that will be complete, completed and finalised. Um, the um, what the current unauthorised residents do while the construction is taking place. All of the usual conditions for any planning application to do with times of times of um, delivery and things like that. But it was because of the complexity of the, the site and the um, uh, and the situation, I think the, the, the table ran to about 11 pages of conditions, most of which were agreed between the parties. And there was also a discussion, there will also be a section 106 undertaking as well, because of the compli complications about site ownership. Do you think the West Barts Council made enough of the, uh, the clandestine way in which the application was, uh, or the occupation yeah. of the site took place, and the fact that this is outside the settlement boundary, which I brought the state into the um, obviously it was a yeah, yeah it's so so um yes both both council um spent considerable time on uh, on those points from different perspectives um and uh the settlement boundary is not a an absolute um particularly when it comes to um gypsy and traveler sites and other non-conventional uh, applications there's another one in cold ash just the other side of Lawrence's lane, which is also outside the settlement boundary and is relying on a different exemption. Yeah, that's um, new house. Yeah, but that's first time. So what I'm saying is that it, that that that, that oh, okay, so, so, so it carries it carries weight, but it's not it's not decisive. Were they saying there aren't um, traveller and, and gypsy sites in West Parks? The West Parks have been yes lax and not providing enough. Is that part of their? A substantial part, yes. And there was a discussion about how many pitches there actually are in West Berkshire, and they couldn't agree on that point. Um, and any idea when the um, the inspector has made no comment in public, but from private com private comments he's made, I think it might be quite soon. But, I, but that's purely my my assessment of his. Uh, of uh, uh, comments he's made as an aside. Thank, thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Would it be appropriate to ask that if the if the inspector was minded to approve, would it set a, a precedent? Um, so that is one of the things that I was trying to make sure that, that the so if the council when the council determines a planning application, it can either approve or reject. The inspector has at least two further options, which is to a time limited approval or an approval to specify people only. Um, and um, if it's a time limited approval, then all of the work has to be undone at the end to restore the site and it'll still be previously developed land. So one of the things that I did in discussion with, uh, discussed it with um, other councillors beforehand was to emphasize the, if it was to happen, uh, then a personal approval would be better than temporary approval. And did, the, did anybody raise the issue? I think you raised earlier. Um, that uh, we read somewhere that um, some of these folks uh, came into this field very early one morning with yeah. mixes and so on. I mean, 
Was there any question as to why they did that instead of going through a planning yes. process? Yes, so they, they were cross-examined on that, and I made reference to the um, uh, the evidence given by councillors Lister and, and Dylan at the first hearing, which seems an awfully long time ago now. Yeah. But yeah, so um, that was uh, a dis disagreement between the councillors to what weight that should be given by the inspector. But it was it was raised in at length. Yes, it's an unusual way to approach. Uh... The and, and the the uh, and the site residents did gave their explanation of why they did it to, uh, uh, on Thursday in that session as well. Yeah, so four four o'clock on Friday for a bank holiday Monday yeah. so as to extract the maximum mm. time window they could. Yeah. So, so I think that uh, that's only for information. So uh, if we can, uh, if you've got any questions, um, well done, Jim. That's what you. Oh, and I just say that the uh, the, the council is the West Berkshire Council is applying for costs due to the um, uh, the reason for reasons for the adjournment. Uh, and I, I I said that uh, unfortunately we are not we, well we are not applying for costs because um, I'm doing it as a volunteer. So there's no cost involved. They'll, they'll have a whip round. Thank if, you. If you win, we'll yeah. give you I did. I did actually. I think I had next. I did actually have an extra pay of uh, payment of one extra bus fare due to the delay, but I didn't think it was worth the bureaucracy. And still, the cost of the high court case that uh, West Barks had to bring at the beginning of all this. And uh, yeah, and that's uh, a separate. That is not part of I, the appeal. I, I, yeah, I yeah. it's a separate matter, but I raised it several times with the, mm. the lawyer dealing with it. Never had a really satisfactory answer, and mm. they should be. Have you got an injunction? You should get your cost to go with it. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so um, thank you. So we'll move on to uh, where we've got agenda item eight, appeal for Limber Lost Farm. Now this is a rather curious appeal because it's an appeal to the planning inspectorate over a refusal to uh, over a determination if prior approval is required. Um, do you want to do you have do you have anything to say about it? I, I just... don't have an awful lot more. Okay, so basically, when I look, there I have actually been three applications, I think, for prior approval, all of which have been rejected. And um, rather than putting in the application, it appears that the applicant has lost patience and gone to appeal and is also asking for costs. Um, so uh, this hasn't come before us because we don't normally consider. Uh, applications for prior approval but now it's gone to appeal there is in fact the principle that the the inspector could grant the um the grant the effectively grant the approval um having looked at it i don't it's a a pretty remote location it's not not visible except perhaps from public footpath and it's a pretty small development and i would suggest that we don't take any action on it because at the point of an appeal one would have to write quite a lengthy um, text and I have had my <laughs> done more than my fair share of writing lengthy texts. For those we take the motion. Thank you. Uh, happy to support that. And those in favour, thank you. So we come to agenda item nine, pre-application for proposed base station. Have you got anything on? Sorry, right. So okay. if we look at the document, uh, I go right to the bottom drawing basically. Um, and um, Councillor Lister will be able to confirm this, but basically what they're doing is replacing the mast to, to support 5G and um, adding an extra cabinet for the same reason. Uh, I had a quick look on Street View and uh, I hadn't really registered that particular mast, so it's obviously not very prominent. But what I did notice, although there are trees there, as you can see, uh, the mast is substantially above. And in fact, when you look along the road, it's, it's basically seen against the sky. Um, so I would suggest this is a, a letter from the um, company concerned. It's not at the moment not a planning application and they're asking for our comments. My suggestion would be as the current mast is green and it's all green because it has a cylindrical um, cover at the top. The new mast has individual uh, uh, panels, which will be a light grey. Uh, my only comment would be, can they make the mast grey rather than green? And that's yeah. what I mean. We're going to respond. We can ask them. And I think they come in two coloured anyway. So and this is purely advisory. Yeah. How, how tall is it and is it going to be taller? If it's, it's the same height because that is the maximum. I think there might be a few centimetres in it. I think they spotted. I see. Yeah. I'm talking 19, 19 yeah. meters, 78. So plus, 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 the GP, plus the GPS module on top. Yeah, but that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Given that it's green now yeah. and you've not noticed it, I would suggest you keep it green. 
Okay. Yeah, it does have a back. It's just because of, because of the grey, because of the light, light panels, it's a bit different. Anyway. Yeah, so, 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 so in that. which case, we don't make any comments, I think, because if, it, if yeah, they're going to fake it, grey will make I would suppose it would change it. No, yeah. no, no response or to, a, a thank and response of thanks. If you could send an email saying thank you to so that we they continue to let us know and we might find something more um, more obtrusive in in the future. Thank you. So we'll we'll if you could just give them a, a courtesy thanks for this one. Uh, application for grant of street trading consent. Agenda item uh, ten. And I'm assuming we're approving the the um the pre the, the well that's not the premises the trailer and not the menu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, why is we redacted? Because we've got name, personal per personal name, details. personal details, name and address, that sort of thing. That's standard that's practice. Just general practice. Yeah. General practice. Yeah. Through GDPR. Through yeah. GDPR and uh, just. General practices. Mm. Not so it happens if you look at any representation on the planning portal. It'll, the planning application is done unless you specifically say that you're you're confident that you're happy for your name to be, or, or certainly your address to be um, public. Public. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Well, I'm assuming it would be. A, Either a permanent or for a standard duration. Is there anything on there? Because, uh, you know, if you, if you put them at a particular point here, it allows us to review it, perhaps. Is it? Um, is something going to turn wrong? Or... Uh, I think we're getting into the, the, the detail of lic licensing. I don't know what the rules would be. I would. Um, I think normally licensing is, 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 a perm is a permanent thing, but of course, any of them, any licensing can be overturned, as indeed happened with. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what it's called now. The um, the, the large mm -hmm. house on Hookham Hill, Pinchington yeah, Hall. The location becomes you know untenable for any reason. If you want to have the opportunity of saying, "I'm sorry, this is not worked out," and there's a bit of well, notice. Presumably, the trustees of the hall do, mm -hmm. because that would be a commercial concern. This is only admitting them to, to operate the street, trading enterprise. Mm -hmm. Um. And the arrangements for the use of that location, which is a, not a street itself, um, would be commercial between, I assume, it's the Mora Hall and uh, and the, the trader. Yeah. So, <coughs> any do you have any comments on it? No further comments. No, no further comments. No, um, um, just give me about um, what can we use that space for the um, membrane sprays? Yeah. And, um, Somebody wants to ensure that that wouldn't be obstructing any of the memories plays. Okay. Um, within there was an email that came as well. Um, where are we? Uh, Traffic and road safety wrote back that um, as the proposed site is off the public highway and separated from other road users, other than slow moving vehicles within the private car park, mm. we would have no specific concerns or objections to this application, as I'm sure you'll be will be mentioned by others, the applicant must be advised of the need to take into account Remembrance Day and other memorial services as they arise and be prepared to be prevented from using that space on those days and times. So that was the response from the traffic and road safety. I do guess actually looking at the layout, um, that it is whether it's in that particular location is in keeping with being addressed to particular memorial, is that? Yeah. But I, I, the, my feeling is that for licensing, that's a question really for the memorial trust to consider. For for the what we've asked to be considered here is the licensing, which is the um, the impact on the neighbourhood and so, uh, you know the there are very very specific grounds for objecting to a licensing application. Yeah. Are there any other comments? I mean, it's generally, I'm for yeah. businesses and mm. new things wrong. You know, good looks of um, bins and rubbish. You know, it's coffee, tea, sandwiches. Maybe pastry, savory snacks as they things they sell. So, identify bin facilities are they responsible for? I suppose we don't look at it. No, it's just been more than the end of the town council. You know, whilst this is not our car park, town council gets a lot, a lot of abuse and things that are wrong in the car park. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't like it to say that we put in. 
just trying to think if there's anything around that corner. What is the difference? Well, I think the point is that they would need to supply their own because it, 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 it they would because it's truck business business right waste. They would need to supply their own. Um, yeah, but we don't see that contract here. No. Well, what we we don't have any authorities. So I think the point is that we can only comment on. Um, so trustees are given permission for the use of the land. Um, mm. Licensing has received this application and now undertaking our standard consultation process. In the event you wish to make an objection, please send by latest the 22nd of March. So it's a couple of things I'd just like to ensure they have considered in the members of trade that have done. Uh, rubbish. And also, what, what's the source of power for the unit? Are they going to have an engine running continually? The generator. generator. I'm trying to think what's next door to it. So, block, block of the flats. Um, I, mean, I think it's a car park at that, well, at that far forward. It's flat, uh, the car park for the flats, I think. They don't come yeah. all the way to the road. Just when one's yeah. something running, you know, yeah. something running continually outside the window. Um, yeah. I, 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 just have a something out here. I think there's a, a power source. Um, this is right next to War Memorial, and mm. beside the um, first bit of land here. You know, it's um, yes, please. An, an area just to the right, and like a little, uh, an offshoot of the car park, and it's used for the doing the memorial service. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That would make sense because power coming out somewhere with mm. power side. That is available. So, so I think can we raise uh, those two? Can, well, uh, the, I think the, the power is if they're, they're, well. The noise. We want to make sure that the if if it's perfect that the not if the if it's generated there's that there's adequate measures on noise and particularly that there are measures for disposal of of, of waste. Uh, and that may not be a matter for the licensing, but they can tell us if, they, if, if it is. And, <coughs> yeah. and also the warm events parade. Nothing I think it's been, that's been covered in the email that you've got, so I think we don't need to worry about that. Well, we don't, we've, it's been, we've been reassured already about that one. <laughs> Looking, it doesn't need to go to any comment, but uh, given that it's a PTV TNR camera there, Mm. Anybody who's been advised of sandwich <laughs> needs to be careful they don't get clocks and uh, get a mm. sixty pound penalty charge. Yeah. Well, I did, I did, I did sort of cross my mind, but it's, it's in the middle of a car. It's a bit tricky. Okay. So um, it said if you wish to make an objection, but you don't wish to make an objection, you just wish to comment on. Exactly. E, e, well, yes. Yeah, so the point is, I think the point is we don't know what what grounds they. Mm -hmm. um, they have for what what grounds they can, can that they they have for, for objecting. So we we want to make sure that uh, we would object if, if there are grounds for doing so uh, for for for, 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 for refuge disposal and it's not adequately addressed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's a shame someone couldn't have come here and just read us on the yeah. yeah. I think that well, I think they, they may not even know that we've received it. So. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess to get every time. Well, I'm sure that they'll be aware of it. Yeah. Okay. So I think we've dealt with the licensing aspects of that uh, application. So we move on to agenda item 11. And uh, we have no actual planning applications to consider, but there is one which is uh, an application of prior approval, which uh, we wouldn't normally consider, but in view of its uh, location, um, we, we are, which is um, an application to determine if prior approval is required for the demolition of number 16 Chapel Street uh, in order to facilitate the uh, development behind. Did this come up? Previously? No, this is they did. So they, we had the application for the development, which assumed that the house would be demolished. So, then, but that was, I assume, therefore not explicitly because that's a, the applications for construction. So then they're asking if they need a planning application to make the demolition itself. Um, 
it's split up on Google. Uh, do we need to see it on Google? Do you know Green Chapel Street? Yeah. 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 Um, so, um, we need, I think what well, we all know. So the question is really, uh, what can we do about it? Is the, the question because the um, you have the covering note to this, or did you, did you just get it in some sort of standard? Just got it in a standard form, which literally just gave us that piece of information for right. the option to object, um, no objections or support. Yeah. So I think I think we should object to it um, being a. To, to it being under um, what's exactly the wording we have here. Um, we would object to it um, being um, being being exempt from prior approval. We would object to it being exempt from prior approval. In other words, we we, we would wish it to go to um, to be considered for approval, and then. Yeah. There would be an objection at that the point. But what we're doing is objecting to the exemption from prior approval at this point. So we're saying, yes, he, he should get planning permission before he No, but he should apply for planning permission. Whether right. he gets it is a different question. <laughs> that would be another one, another, another uh, step so down the road. Yeah, but we, we were objecting to him being given permission to do it without actually applying for it. So I think that covers that. I don't think we need to see any more because well, we've any arguments in favour, or is this just a matter of law? Isn't it? It's a matter of law. So we, we, I don't know whether what whether that objection would carry any weight in this circumstance. But given that we're asked as a sort of okay. standard formula to uh, so to do that, then we okay. can make that objection. That's a fairly straightforward thing. So do you need a proposal? Um, well, I'll propose it from the chair. A second for that. Thank you. And those in favour, thank you. Traffic management and highways and road safety matters. Uh, oh, then we got the we got the other the other the other planning applications which are uh, would not we wouldn't consider unless there have been objections. Um, okay, planning matters. Planning matters have arisen since the publication of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Um, so, um, do you want me to introduce this one? Yeah, okay. you so, um, you may recall we've on two occasions received uh, an application for uh, for the construction of three bungalows behind two houses uh, on Bath Road, close to the Hennick Lane Junction, mm -hmm. and we have given no objection. Well, the first time we gave no objection, and, and the second time we made no objection with some supportive comments. Uh, West Berkshire Council refused on both occasions, and the applicant has now gone to appeal. Um, so I was, frankly, the second time it was uh, refused, it, it was one of the most surprising refusals I've seen because uh, three, three, three bungalows in the gardens of two houses is immediately adjacent to, I think it's 40, 43 flats and eight houses in the, in the grounds of what the seven, yes. uh, seven houses on the corner. So. Um, I thought I'd got it. Okay, so uh, my suggestion here, uh, this is a, a, an appeal, um, is that we support the appellant in his appeal because I think we we, we obviously need to uh, have some new houses in thatch, and there seems to be of of the options. It's a very low density, certainly compared with um, Francis Close. And to be consistent. And to be consistent. And um, I think one of the grounds that they kind of objected was the noise of the vehicles going between the two houses. This is a two houses that's immediately on the A4. Mm. So um, I didn't want any more. On it. <laughs> so um, the um, so what I would suggest is that uh, for this meeting, if you would if you would uh, mind agreeing in principle that we would um, that I will develop. Uh, a, a, a representation of support for the appellant. Right. And we'll, that, that will be for, for consideration at our next meeting. So we'll come to us again. But, but sorry, the previous times that the application we've been in, we have been, as I was, have raised no objection. The first time with no objection. The second time when we were surprised it had been rejected the first time, we made no objection and we made some supporting comments below that. 
Support, so, but we didn't actually say we support, but we said we had no objection, and, and these so are. Just going to come back to this again at the next. Come back to the mid I'm just asking for your, your support for me to write that. I support. Yeah. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Thank you. So, so I haven't got quite got off the hook of writing representations yet. And the, by the way, this this will be dealt, dealt with by, by by paper representations. There won't be a hearing. Okay, so um I'm sorry, I've gone traffic management. Yes. So this I think this is your, very much your, your topic to introduce. Yes. Um well I'm still uh, working on this one to sort of try and hone it down to a more manageable report. I'm not sure we've had too many responses since this was last reviewed. Um and I know that Councillor Woodham's met with uh, West Berkshire Council as well. Highways, uh, yes. highways and um yes. We're looking at a way of tracking this better. Um, I think we've had through I'm just trying to see if there was anything more recent. I think Councillor Owen brought up something about traffic lights on the A4 and there was long delays and um, there's been a response to that about the fact that it was for the flood alleviation schemes. Um, they've also said, or I've heard that the white lining in Broadway has been completed mm -hmm. apart from um, the look left and look right mm -hmm. signs. Um, not done. Okay. I say again, why did we do this ourselves? So we ring the West Bars and say, if you can evolve with it, we'll, 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 we'll do it. Well, it is a hot, you know, it is, it is, it is a, um, a, 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 it's applied as a molten substance, it's not actually a paint, mm. and it's set, so it's not something that is could be easily done by. Mm. You can't just buy it from being seen. No. Can't do it. We need to do it ourselves, you know, we have to do it ourselves. Right. Councillor Williams. Whereas me then, Chair, and it's that was to me the idea that Mass Parks would have a look at any other white lining measures yes. that they would like to, uh, you know, encourage us to, to take part yes. in. And uh, when would there be no stopping yes. them, my, my, yes. my worry would be on that one. Uh, it has to be done professionally. It has to be done with the correct material so it doesn't wear out yes. quickly. Um, and so a contractor would need to be engaged. And I think that would be incredibly expensive to do a one-off, yes. whereas I'm assuming the West Barsha Council will have a contract, a contractor, we would do a larger area and uh, it would be more economical to do it that. Can, yeah. I, can I just uh, refer to the fact that I had a meeting yeah. with the high risk officer, introduced the issue uh, where it was taking so incredibly long to get uh, uh, yeah. these works done back back to before uh, August, uh, yeah. the look right, look left, uh, which means you know, the great safety issue where people, especially in the mobility scooters, mm -hmm. are crossing the, uh, the roads either side of the mm -hmm. uh, Broadway. And, and in particular, um, how we could, when we send in inquiries, send in inquiries into mm -hmm. West Parks through the reporter problem scheme, that when we get responses, we can easily marry them up with the original inquiry. That wasn't an easy thing to do at this time. Um, so I, I was asking the officer, you know, what particular reference would we use? So when we send an inquiry in and they refer the respondent to it, we could pick it up and marry it up with the original inquiry, as I say. Um, it was a very, very profitable uh, meeting, and uh, the officer did listen very carefully. And uh, he came up with the idea, which I think was quite healthy, uh, to meet uh, with the deputy mm. town clerk, uh, who you know has first hand experience of this mm. to come and when, when it's convenient. <laughs> come and speak with her and show her how the system works. It's it's constantly being upgraded. Not everything is on the new system. Yeah. So everything is taking a bit of time to be updated. Yeah. So he, he is actually going to make an appointment to come speak to yeah. the town clerk 
um, to uh, praise her and how the system works. Mm. And then she can in turn say, well, look, you know, we have this difficulty, how can we overcome it? So there's a bit of a seamless mm. response going backwards and forward uh, and makes life easier for both them and, and, and the mm. platform and us. And then we get responses as well. Um, so that um, we're, we're mm. kept in the dark. And when we go to surgeries, people will say, well, what's happening? And perhaps in the box, we can have updated information it's going to be done next year, July, mm. part of the program or something. So we can respond confidently to the to the, mm. the, the residents. Um, but at the moment, it's a bit of a mishmash and um, it's not that helpful. Mm. So good news uh, and positive responses. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I think that's, we note mm -hmm. this and that will be, I think we'll be seeing this probably every meeting now, won't we? Um, <coughs> hopefully it will disappear. Right? Hopefully it gets shorter, yes. I just want to make a brief comment on page two. It's about potholes on Turnpike Road outside mm -hmm. the hospital, which I mean, I drive along there regularly. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a real pain to yeah. keep having to uh, mm -hmm. sometimes drive drive right in the middle of the road to ensure you're not um, uh, going mm -hmm. into these uh, potholes or where the surfaces are deteriorated. Yeah. Um, but the, 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 the purpose of this is a log, not not. No, I think probably we're going to a discussion about all of the content. We've just collated what we've already got and what's in progress. Yeah, just a couple of thoughts. I've run just a little while. The response from West Barks, I mean, is quaint, is, is, is it? Uh, the first paragraph one says we reject and we conclude that no further action is required. We're saying the road is okay. The next paragraph says um, this section um, is included uh, within. The highway improvement uh, program is going to be and you're going to be surface. So it's left hand saying everything's all right, and right hand saying we're going to do something. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I'm glad no action can be taken. Watch this. Okay. Can I concur? If you if you drive both directions along turn like that, it is a poor. Mm. And if you're taking someone to a hospital. The damaged leg, so you know, and he's just outrageous. Mm. And, and they put a sign up, trying to sign up saying pumps in the road or something. But they, there are potholes beyond in the middle, potholes mm. down the side, and earth. Mm. West Park, we carried out an inspection by the metal race in recent court, and as a result, we haven't concluded that no further action is required. I mean, why mm. don't they come out and look at the road instead of sitting behind the desk, mm. looking at a laptop? What are yeah. they doing? Mm. It's appalling. And also, the sign is still hanging on by a thread mm. as you approach the garden yeah. centre roundabout. What? It's so embarrassing for mm. the West Berkshire mm. Council. Yeah. Um, it's not doing much these days, I'm afraid. And I think it needs a bit of a kick up the backside. Then. Yes. Being mm. polite. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, 13B, uh, any other? No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, decision notices. So, we haven't had many um, come through in the last week or so. Um, so, uh, yeah, I didn't consider the top one. Um, laundry cottages, first floor extension, TTC had no... They say that the one at Benham Hill, I recall that we did actually send them comments before it was mm. submitted. So we have considered it, but not as an application. As an application yeah. And anyway, it's permitted development so that they don't need. Yeah. yeah. And then the final one, um, it didn't come to us. Um, there's been a split decision on it. Um, well, the split decision means. Three judges to four. Is there a. Uh, next I think it means that they agreed some of the yeah. changes, but not all. Um, yeah. I think all. What decisions are about the same? Yeah. Oh, so there's the detail submitting relation down a bit further. The detail submitted relation to conditions seven out here by refused. Mm. Yeah, the, uh, the and uh, fail to conserve the historical oh, architectural so. importance of the 18th mm. century building. Harmful to the conservation area. Um, what does that mean? Not 
non-planning speak that are they trying to get out of um, uh, certain terms and conditions? Yeah, can you scroll, can you scroll up a little bit? Uh, well, I don't know which what those conditions are, but yes, so basically it, they're trying to um, not have to apply some of the conditions that were applied at the time of, of um, planning approval. Which which bank is this? Is this the bank? Or That's a bank, yeah. Which one? The one with the, the, one with the, the on the on the right as you go down the high street. Uh, it's the one with the um, archway oh, with the, behind. It used to be that west oh, bus. Yeah, yeah, that that was yeah. yeah that was that something happened to that. So. Mm. Yeah, it's. I understand why people, why, why the heritage department wants to protect things, but we need to move forward, in my view, yeah. to making sure the buildings are. But I think they are, they, they are modern. Yeah, but is that what they're. Um, well, I mean, I just know from experience yeah. from uh, another resident yeah. in yeah. Newbury who's had all sorts of problems trying to, trying to swap out a window frame. Yeah. And, but they are. I think. I think they're inserting an extra door in the front or something. It's. It's not a. It's not a trip. It may be that that. So. But of course, they they have a, they've had approval. It's not that they the, the approval has been refused. They're now asking to um, not to apply some of the conditions that were given when it was approved. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's the decision notices. Um, and then we have reports from town council appointees to outside bodies. And unless you have anything, uh, then I think it's been sent. To me been sent so there's nothing uh, to report on that. Uh, of course, the uh, the uh, the the uh, attenuation ponds are now in progress. Um, unfortunately, uh, they are at the location where people think that. Uh, access will be built for housing developments. Yes. Uh, it started exactly at the time when people think that that might happen. Yeah. Um, anyway. There are orange notes. Good. Turn and be what the extension. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But they okay. are very concerned about you know, potential housing development. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thank you very much. And with that, the meeting is closed. Well,